we live in, in a, a generation that wants to produce more Kanye's as opposed to Carter G. Woodson's mm. and W.E.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington's. No. So now, you know, during that time, hey, I want to be a scholar. I'm following the path of the, the first black man at, to get a Ph.D. from Harvard. I'm inspired by that. Yeah. I'm inspired by hearing the, the, the stories or being, that, being taught to read from my mom. I'm that, that's a, yeah. a different kind of bond. But in this generation, I mean, the, the scholars have been replaced by the rappers and the entertainers. So when we hear those stories, those become the aspirational stories for a lot of black people as opposed to digging deep. And not just the soundbite. Season two of Gentleman's History Hour is sponsored by HughRepublic.com. H-U-E Republic.com. Go to HughRepublic.com and get the latest colors to rep your hue. Gentleman's History Hour, season two. Ladies and gentlemen, back again for the hey. win. Hey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's that boy EQ. <laughs> hey, Rob J10X, man. Yeah, man, I'm in a good mood, man. In a good hey, mood. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling good, mood, man. You know, it's how all, you, it's how all you, on, on a scale of 1 to 10, how you, how, you, how you living, man? Mind, body, and spirit. Hold man, bro, yeah, man, I hate to lie, man, so I, I got to be honest, real man. with the people, man. But I'm at about a 6, man, but I was okay. at a 4, so, you know what I'm saying? I'm up 50%, okay. you know okay. what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, man, because so. this subject, man, that we're going to talk about today, I want to... You know, it's yeah. the encouragement, the most depth, the inspiration. Most depth. So most wherever depth. you started at, by the time we get through having this conversation, man, hey, we'll bro. take it up. So now, I love the end of the seven. We'll go, yeah, 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 we'll take it up. We'll take end, it up to yeah. a seven, man. Mind, you know, you know, mind, body, spirit. Just the the holistic approach to it. Most definitely, you know, most definitely. Looking at it, man. So you know, we are currently in Black History Month. Yep. Time to shine, you know, all the lectures and, <laughs> yeah. you know, all of the corporations pull out they black, yeah. they, they, they black to, products, put some Kente cloth, cloth over some stuff and and, yeah. and and get it going, you know. Now, by the time we put this out, it's not going to be February. Yeah, right? so we'll be early March, so what's that? That's, we'll be in Latino well, history. But we never... <laughs> <laughs> what's 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 much uh what's the leprechaun uh, uh Irish history book? St. Patrick's Day. Oh yeah, like so, yeah. But no, on, on on the real um when we were discussing what we want to talk about, we never really got into the history of black history. Mm -hmm. And we never really got into the history of Carter G. Wilson. Yeah. So and that's why I was asking initially mind, body, and spirit, because when we do the deep dives on particular people in history. You got to start with man the the the, the times that they were living in and okay. what they were going through, mind, body, and spirit on a day to day level, especially as a as a scholar during yeah. that time. Most definitely, and uh, Carter G. Was, that was a great deep dive, man. Honestly, like because I know first season we had briefly touched on the Negro History Week and some of the incepts, but we hadn't. You know, season two, man, we hey, we in our playbook now, man. We going, yeah. we we taking some deep yeah. dive. Yeah. I learned a lot about him philosophically. Uh, that really, really was was eye opening. Um, and we can address up front. We can address one common misconception I brought up to you. Go ahead, man. A lot of brothers, a lot of us like to say in the black community, why is Black History Month the shortest month of the year? And it's not out of a conspiracy or <laughs> something. That's not out of short change yeah. or anything like yeah. that. It's because Carter G. Woodson initially had Negro History Week, and Negro History Week was to honor uh, was honor us, but it was during uh, the weeks of Abraham Lincoln and mm -hmm. was it was Frederick Douglass? And Frederick Douglass, the birthdays, birthdays, yeah. both yeah. in February. So yeah. when it went from week to month, it was already in February. Yeah. It's no finesse, <laughs> no conspiracy, yeah. Yeah. no shortchanging us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't like a white person saying, we're going to pick, <laughs> yeah. pick February. But, you know, we'll deep dive into the history of black history. You know, we can, we can touch on that first. You want, yeah, most you definitely, know, man. From going to, to, to that start of uh, Negro history or the second week in February, you know, one of the things with, with Carter G. Woodson was having the um, – the passion of yeah. telling our story and not to just, it started as Negro history, history week. And with him doing it, it was for people to take the time to study and learn and engage. And I just, mm -hmm. uh, um, 
American history. We're talking about uh, African history as well. So it wasn't just our history here in America. And I, and, and around, and this was 1926. Yeah. And then in 1970, Kent State, they observed Black History Month. And then Gerald Ford in 1976 observed it as officially as Black History Month. And every president after that observed it as uh, Black History Month. So, we, you know, starting by 1926, yeah, Carter G. Wilson, think, Negro History Week. I think, too, one thing is that we talked about a lot of people on uh, a lot of activists, revolutionaries, uh, mm -hmm. black, African-American, foundational black men and women. But mm -hmm. I think what is unique to Carter G. Woodson to me is he had a he had the spirit of a of a teacher from day one. And he wasn't. a. I feel like, you know, Booker T answered the call of teaching because of a need for teaching. I feel like Carter G. Wood was if, if he was alive today, he would have been a teacher. If he would have been born in 60, he would have been a teacher. He truly had a spirit of education uh, and that's not to slight anybody else who came mm -hmm. before or after him, but I think that that, he, that just makes him such a great uh, focal point for this month when we're when we are attempting at least a portion of us are attempting to educate us about us. Um, I think he's a great archetype, and also a uh, hey, shout out to also the Omega men out there watching too because he's a. Yeah, you know, I got told I play chess with a couple of guys who make us a fire. So I would be proud to have this as a frat brother of mine. Yeah. So shout out to to those brothers as well because they brought me some information about him as well. Yeah. Um, but I think he's just a special person to focus on. You know? Yeah, and, and we we hear Black History, and you know people have talked about Black History Month, and they delve into the history of Black History. But a lot of people don't really delve into the history of the person that started it, no, Carter no. Godwin. Um, Woodson, Carter yeah. G. Yeah, um, the Carter. <laughs> so the the way I yeah. approach it, man, because I, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. My introduction to to Carter G. Woodson was okay, uh, the father of Black history, and I never really deep diving in I'm re reading the Miseducation of the Negro, yeah. the book that he wrote, 1933. Which, of course, Lauren Hill had the album that came out, the Miseducation of Lauren Hill, kind of inspired off of that same same title. So my start was. Okay, miseducation of the Negro. It still didn't take me to 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 delve into Carter G. Woodson. And a lot of mm -hmm. times in black history, his name only comes up as the father of black history month, but never about what he actually accomplished outside yeah. of that. And starting for me, what I start to, to 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 do is for people look at their start and start with their parents. Mm. So his parents were born in slavery. He's from Virginia. So you got to think, um, slavery was going on around the time. Now, he was born during Reconstruction. His dad um, never learned how to read. His dad actually escaped and joined detached Union troops. So his dad escaped the plantation that he was on. Okay. Um, his mom... Um, she has a, 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 a pretty deep history, and I think at one point, her, um, and this is just to, to give some context on the, the two parents that birthed this man. Yeah. You know, dad leaving to join, uh, escaping from the plantation that he was to join the, the detached um, Union soldiers. Mom, at one point, I think the, the plantation she was on, they wanted to sell her mom, hmm. um, put her mom on an auction block, and she said, no. Um, Hey, y'all can auction me off so my mom can stay with the, with the rest of the kids. Mm. But nobody wow. would, nobody um, bought her. Yeah. So they end up still auctioning her mom off. So, you know, this is just the start of the, like, the bloodline of the people that he came from. So now he's born during the Reconstruction time. His parents were enslaved. And the mom learns how to read, so she teaches him how to read. So his introduction into education was through his mom. Mm. She taught him how to read. So he got the spirit of his dad, the working spirit. So he started working in a coal mine in Virginia. So he didn't just start out as no scholar. He was a blue collar working man. Yeah. But he knew how to read. And we was talking what we were talking about earlier. One of the, the things about it is that uh, when he was working in the coal mines, he was a young. He's a young guy, but he's working with a lot of older guys that couldn't read. 
but they had fought on the side of the Union in a civil war. Mm. So he was getting, the, the, the trade off was, hey, young bro, you read the newspaper to us and we'll tell you stories. Okay. And he made a promise to them, hey, I'll, um, even though a lot of them died before he was able to, to actually do it, he said, I'll, I'll document y'all stories and then um, when I get a chance, I'll put it out to the world. And so he eventually started writing articles about those stories that he heard from those guys that he worked with in the, in the coal mine. Mm. So 20 years old, no formal education. He don't go to high school until he's 20. You yeah. know, the average sign, you, 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 <laughs> yeah, was, you know, nowadays a 20 year old in high school. That was a fun find. Like, people going to question your integrity. But in two years, hey, he breezed through. He graduated. Yeah. So you going from the coal mines to going to high school, high school, Frederick Douglass, named after Frederick uh, Douglass, yeah. the high school that he went to. So you go there, then, you, so this passion for education, you go high school, then he went to college in, um, in Kentucky, um, breezed through college. I mean, now he's, he's learning, because the whole time, he's learning to, to, to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. So goes to high school, graduates, Goes back to teach, then eventually became the principal of a high school. Yeah, oh, that, and that goes back to your, your what you talked about last episode with the, the normal, yeah, those um, normal school classification. Because, yeah. I, you know, granted, the research may have been, I can't just validate it 100%, but it, from mm-hmm. my understanding, it was saying while he was studying his undergrad degree, he was already the principal of his old high school. So, mm. uh, that would kind of go back to which is what you were saying last episode about how sometimes we would be teaching while we were learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, so you were the, yeah, you, yeah. You, as soon as you graduate, yeah. they're like, oh, he learned something? <laughs> Teach everybody else now. Yeah. You know, so that passion. So now he goes to school, goes to college at Berea College in Kentucky. Then he goes to teach for four years. He teaches in the Philippines, right? I want to say from like 1903 to 1907. He was, they called it the education, educational uh, superintendent or educational, education supervisor, I had whatever name. Now, when I'm studying, I'm like, the Philippines, why, how did Carter G. Wilson end up in the Philippines? This is a like, side note, like just doing the history. I, what I didn't know was that at a certain point from 1898 to 1947, the U.S. acquired the Philippines from Spain with the signing of the, uh, the Treaty of Paris. So the Philippines was part of the U.S. territory until 1947. Okay, so, I didn't know that either. Yeah, until 1947, the, uh, the Philippines were considered um, American citizens. Like Puerto Rico is today? Uh, maybe so, I don't, I hadn't. Um, so Puerto Rico, they considered U.S. citizens? Don't give me this mis mis uh, describing it, but I know this. It's like a it's considered a U.S. territory, and I know okay. they can vote. Can they vote in our like it? I, it's something. It's like a gray area. I don't know if they're mm-hmm. quite just. I mean, bo- bo- being from Puerto Rico isn't the same as being from Texas, but mm-hmm. at the same time, it's not considered like a foreign country. It's kind of a. Mm-hmm. I don't. I think it's a U.S. territory. But yeah, it, it was it was considered um, U.S. territory. So people in the Philippines were considered U.S. citizens at that time. So he does that stint for four years. Then he goes to Chicago to get a degree. Okay. University of Chicago. Okay. Now, after leaving the University of Chicago, because he gets his, his uh, he gets a bachelor's and a master's from the University of Chicago, then he goes to Harvard University after getting that uh, master's degree from the University of Chicago. Mm. Only the second Black man to get a PhD from Harvard. Right, this man in the late bloomer Hall of Fame, man. <laughs> man, he did all this after starting high school at, at 20. 20. That's what I'm saying. Man, hey. And that's why I brought up the holistic, you know, mental, physical, spiritual level, you know, that you want on the day-to-day because his day-to-day at 20 years old, working in a coal mine, your parents were enslaved, your dad never yeah. knew how to read, your mom taught you how to read, and then you got this passion for education. And we just said in the context for the person that would be known as the father of black history, who didn't yeah. start high school until he was 20 years old. Yeah. Right? 
I got a question for you that's just out of two things you brought up. Uh, I'm sorry, make it a two prong question. Uh, one, you brought up the blue collar background, and it made me wonder about is the blue collar scholar extinct? You know, and then the second mm-hmm. follow up to that is the obligation to brothers who had less. Have we lost that obligation as as intellectuals, as our, you know, maybe the boy talented tenth, so, so to speak? Have we lost the obligation to the 90s? Uh, man, that's a well, you know, we touched on it on the uh, the last episode where Brother L, he was talking about blacks that, that come from come from the hood and then they go to an HBCU and then they get educated, but they don't go back. Mm hmm. So maybe it's along the, the 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 same lines, but to answer your first question, I think the the blue collar thing has a lot to do with your region, right? Being from the south, it's it's the idea of what we say, get it out the mud. The difference between Booker T and W. E. B. Du Bois was Du Bois was not a, he his parents were not enslaved. He wasn't a descendant yeah. of you know parents that were enslaved. Booker T actually experienced slavery. Yeah. So those different ideologies of the, the blue collar versus the intellectual type. And a guy like Carter G. Woodson was maybe a mix of a little bit of both because guess who he was inspired by? Booker T. Washington and Marcus Garvey. Okay. Those were kind of his guys. Guys that, you know, um, Garvey was inspired by Booker T. So you, you kind of see who yeah. inspired who, the even lineage. though he did go to Harvard being inspired by W.E.B. Du Bois, but at the time that he went to Harvard, like um, one of the scholars said, Harvard made more money off of his name, off of Carter G. Woodson going to Harvard, than Carter G. Woodson got by going to Harvard. <laughs> Don DeMarco. <laughs> you know, like, hey, that's bar. Like, you know, that's, like, wait, hey, you got that's, yeah. you got to flush that out. Wait, so well, it's like they 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 have profited off of being able to say Carter G. Woodson is an alumni from Harvard. He got a wow, PhD from okay. Harvard more than Carter G. Woodson can capitalize off of saying, hey, I got a PhD from Harvard. Mm. The school can, cap- they can capitalize more off of his name by going to that university. Okay. You know, it's almost like sports. Yeah, you know, nah, so, that's a... You know, they, they, can, they can, you know, inst- they say, I'm gonna, hey, you know Carter G. Woodson went to Harvard. Yeah. He got his PhD. Oh, man, I'm on the enroll. Yeah. It, it, hey, it, but I'm the person that I can't, I'm not getting nothing out of it. Y'all barely even really wanted me there at the time. Mm, that's so, a good point. You know, that's a great point. But I mean, that, that's to, to, to give the, the context and the buildup of his education. Now you got this man, they got this um, PhD from Harvard. But throughout the whole time, he's just still big on education. Yeah. He's still big on education and educating black people about our history. Mm. So... After graduating from Harvard, he eventually was a dean of uh, arts, uh, liberal arts at Howard for only about a year. And the, the other part about um, Carter G. Woodson was that he's a little, he's one of them dudes in the scholarly world. You know, they didn't have hip hop back then. Yeah. But amongst the scholars, he was kind of like the, the, Hard to get along with, dude. That's my type of scholar right there. <laughs> Whereas, like, you know, heart. you got like a W.E.B. on his side and, and other scholars. Whereas, um, hey, let's just spell it out. He wasn't as appeasing the white folks as some yeah, of well, the that, other. That was, that was the other part of it um, in talking about money. They all got money from the Rosenwalls and, and all of these white uh, philanthropic organizations or these uh, white philanthropists. Mm-hmm. They were all getting money. The difference in Carter G, what he would tell like the uh, the the W E B Du Bois and some of the other scholars was like, "Hey, um, y'all getting money from white folks." It's like you getting money from white folks too. <laughs> but his rebuttal was, "Hey man, but they can't they can give me money, but they can't buy me." Mm. Meaning, if they start trying to tell me what I can do with the money, I'll tell them I don't want it. Yeah. If they start telling y'all what y'all got to do with the money, y'all don't rebel. Y'all mm. take it. That's so it. I'll take I'll hey, I'll take the sacrifices for it. And he was kind of marching to the beat of his own drum. Okay. 
At what point during his educational journey were you describing just uh, from Philippines to Harvard and all that is the miseducation of the Negro written or is it Oh, that came later. See, that's the other thing. That's like his, you know, in, in, in terms of, of music, right? That's like his highest yeah. selling album. <laughs> you know, Man. But then they don't realize he had other books that he wrote. I mean, he wrote The Education of the Negro. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But it was that's called The Education of the Negro. That's, that's um, crazy. Prior to 1861. So he was documenting the education of the Negro from slavery up until the Civil War. Okay. And that was written in, let me check. That was written in, I want to say, um, that's 19, correct. The fact that Carter G. Wilson has a education of the Negro book. Yeah, and a missing. Like, so, so the, the, the first book was The Education of the Negro prior to 1861 in 1919. The Miseducation of the Negro didn't come out until 1933. Yeah, that's crazy. Because I, you know, I actually, I got reacclaimed, reacclaimed with the uh, miseducation preparing for this episode, but that was one of those books, you know, when you're a kid, before you go outside, your dad make you read. So I read yeah. it then, but I never really, I was reading with a child mind. I didn't realize how profound some of the things, if you control a man's mind, oh, yeah. you don't have to worry about his actions. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We gave Malcolm a lot of credit for bars. Yeah. I feel like, man, this guy had bars after listening to that book. I was just like, damn. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, I every, mean, it's 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 a classic, and with a classic, it's just like classic music. It's never old. You read that book now, and you'll say, damn, a lot of this stuff is is still happening now. It doesn't it doesn't read as a dated book because remember, he's giving you. The pathway to say this is how one thing about Carter G. Wilson, it was always about teaching the young people to be trained scholars and having an appreciation for their history so they can train somebody else. So the idea is I'm not holding on to all of this scholarship for myself. Yeah. It's to have kids coming by. The idea of Negro History Week was to celebrate it, to learn, to read. Hmm. And a lot of it was bringing kids. His whole thing was, I want to inspire more scholars, right? Yeah. Totally different era. The era mm -hmm. we live in right now, I don't even know if that exists, man. Dude, look, the most I've heard in Black History Month was people saying they've been inspired by watching the Kanye documentary. Yeah, that's really, yeah, that's really in what In 2022, it's now I'm talking about Carter G. Woodson and at the age of 20, and I'm, I'm reading this stuff like, damn, this, man, I, I ain't doing enough. Yeah. But I live in a generation where I know, you know, hey, a, a man that just b believed more in his beats and raps, it, it, you know what I'm saying, on a documentary, like, man, that's inspiring, that's inspiring. Like, we lost some kind of, we went from trying to, to develop more and more scholars mm -hmm. to, I don't know, uh, you know, I, I don't want to veer off to, to um, sound outdated as to back then and yeah. now but when i look at inspirations and and, and and people to get that inspire us especially for black people in black during black history month hey man you post about it but take the time to actually read and try to get gain some inspiration from the person that started it so, so you can you know use some of that it's like black history month okay for the average black person, Black History Month, which we say, well, it should be every day. It's like Kwanzaa, right? Mm -hmm. Don't just celebrate the seven principles, you know? Yeah. It's supposed to be every day you celebrate a specific principle of Kwanzaa. Every day celebrating Black History Month. And I think we discredit a lot of the ancestors that laid the groundwork for us to be here when we don't practice it. The issue with, I believe the fundamental problem with modern black inspiration is it doesn't lead to actionable steps. So watching the Kanye documentary doesn't lead to, I'm going to start a music school for talented kids that I can edify because I see the power of what music does in young urban kids life. It becomes just a Facebook post about how inspired <laughs> I am yeah. watching this. Watching a Kanye documentary doesn't lead to I'm going to create a course teaching mothers how to edify their sons because I learned seeing Donda and Kanye. So 
I don't know what happened because during the time of their this era of inspiration, their inspiration led to boots on the ground. Yeah. And I think that's a little bit to your point, not to be a, a old back in my day type of guy, but it's kind of like there's a fundamental difference, and that wasn't even our day. Yeah, you we wasn't even alive like, during that time. Yeah, so like, I, I think to, to answer one of you to, to to jump on one of the comments that you made. We live in, in a, a generation that wants to produce more Kanye's as opposed to Carter G. Woodson's mm. and W.E.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington's. No. So now, you know, during that time, hey, I want to be a scholar. I'm following the path of the, the first black man that, to get a Ph.D. from Harvard. I'm inspired by that. Yeah. I'm inspired by hearing the, the, the stories or being, at, being taught to read from my mom. I'm, that, that's a, a, a different kind of bond. But in this generation, I mean, the, the scholars have been replaced by the rappers and the entertainers. So when we hear those stories, those become the aspirational stories for a lot of black people as opposed to digging deep. And not just the sound bite, because it... You know, to make the analogy for hip hop, we talking about Black History Month. It's just like every rapper got the same five rappers that they like. Black yeah. History Month. Well, since we were kids, they showed us the same, same black people. Yeah, we have people watch the we watch the "I Have a Dream" speech every year and completely ignore the fact that Martin Luther King himself disavowed the "I Have a Dream" speech. We, you know, but the fact that they gave you Martin Luther King every year. They gave you Rosa Parks every year. They gave they gave you the same people. That's a question I want to have though, because I, I I'm thinking about this and I'm even thinking about modern times, and we're just looking at different platforms and art forms. The singer is always going to be louder than the writer. So, is it because of the medium? Do you think that that a Carter G. Wilson gets overlooked because it takes more dedication to be a fan of a writer than it does to be a fan of a speaker? You know, it don't take it doesn't take a lot of effort. To be a fan of, of Malcolm or Martin from just their speech. They gave Rosa, a lot. Rosa, Rosa Parks didn't speak, and they put Rosa Parks on everything during Black History Month. So do you think that the reason we don't know, the reason Carter G, do you think there's some malice behind why he isn't promoted maybe the same as, as you know, some of the other people during a Black History Month? Because, I mean, this is a guy. How can we be in Black History Month and this not be the February okay, 1st here's the person answer. that we talk about? The answer is right here. It's Gentleman's History Hour. We take control of the narrative and we tell the story. Okay. That's it. No, I feel it. Hey, you ain't we it. are creating it. That's one of the purposes for us to have this show. Yeah. So we ain't waiting on nobody else to do it. Okay. Hey, nobody gave me the history of Carter G. Woodson. I'm like, oh, we got a show now. We have the medium. We have the platform. We can be the singers. Okay. We can tell the story and hopefully that inspires somebody else. I feel that. Do you so, think do you think though, uh, I'm trying to word this correctly. Do you think uh, the onus of the the stories of us in Black America, the the Carter G. Wilsons and and the the various stories that we told, the Philip Payton Juniors, if the onus is on us, because I was really wondering about this reading about Carter G. I don't believe that Carter G. would have really necessarily cared about critical race theory. And this kind of goes a little bit, I don't know if it's contrarian to what Dr. Horn was saying, but it's like, if the onus is on us to teach about us, how much energy should we put into them teaching about us? Well, okay. Take Carter G. Wilson, for example. He took the responsibility to say, if I don't say it, nobody else is going to do it. Okay. He started, and I always get the, I had to write it down. He co-founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. Of course, they changed it to the study of African-American life yeah. in, in history. He did this in 1915. So to answer your question, he wasn't waiting on anyone else to do it. Mm, then okay. just a, a, a year later, he started the Journal of Negro History in 1916. So what I'm saying is he started documenting this stuff and saying, if I don't do it, if I don't document it, it's not going to get told because someone told me, oh, your history is irrelevant or it doesn't matter as much. So I'm not going to wait on somebody else to do it. I'm going to take the time to study and be a scholar and then go back and teach 
and teach these kids and hopefully they can teach and each one teach one and each one teach another. So to answer your question, Carter G. Wilson just, hey, it's a need for it. I'll do it. I'll document it. Mm, okay. That, that, he started a publishing company. Just did the work. He said it's not enough people publishing. It's black people who have works that's not being published. I'll start a publishing company. Hey, man, I don't know no brothers who graduated from Wilson <laughs> High School, man. I know a lot of Washington, a lot of King grad. <laughs> we need some more. We, this, this man needs some more shine, man. But, right. but I mean, that's, that's the thing. And, 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 of course, even amongst the talented tent, because before he was Omega, he was uh, Sigma Pi Phi, which is the boulet. Okay. But the thing about Carter G was he still had that rebellious spirit to where later on, because he lived to be 74. Okay. So he died in 1950. He's born during Re- imagine he's born during Reconstruction, and you died in 19 right in 1950. Mm. So you lived a life to to see some things happen because stuff was happening in real time back then. Mm-hmm. It's just like W. E. B. Du Bois. He was able to change a lot of stances because he lived a longer time. Yeah. So when we talk about the 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 Malcolms and and the Martins, they didn't live long enough to evolve for us to see. We only see them for where they are. Not for where they could have been. So for Carter G. Wilson, yeah, he started taking those stances on not just accepting money from white um, philanthropists where some of the other scholars were. Mm, Okay. You know, so, you know, when you live to to get to be in your 70s or as W.E.B. Du Bois lived down there to be 100, a lot of his stances changed and evolved. You know, Booker T died at 59. It's a Mm. little different, you, you know. And then... You know, a, a, a part of that life was living on a plantation. Man, let me ask you this too, man. Just uh, man, because you had uh, in this, in introduced this as well. Mm-hmm. The black futures idea. Oh yeah. So now we're getting into the to the now times, and so that's the other part of 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 this discussion. Black history as it relates to twenty twenty two, and there have been arguments on both sides on the relevancy of Black History Month. Okay, and then now people have introduced the the black future. Like, okay, instead of saying black history, black futures. I first, I Kanye said it on the Drink Champs. He's like, man, we need to something about yada 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 black history. We need black futures. Mm-hmm. Um, and I maybe you know, and I can I can only assume, which is dangerous a lot of times. He's saying, all right enough about just the history what are we doing now and what are we, what what history are we making in the now for the future yeah that's a, i mean it's an interesting concept you know what hey brother kanye has some great ideas and i get there's a and there's a certain art to leaving blanks to be filled in and then there's also a certain mystery because i'm like yeah. okay what what exactly black people now i do believe like it's an atrocity that Black History Month, I've been on this planet 39 years, and Black History Month that I studied in elementary school was the Black History Month that my baby cousin studied, that yeah. my nephew is now studying. Yeah. Because nothing happened during that time. So, you know, that part I can understand the Black Futures uh, from the stance of, you know, when does Reginald Lewis get in the books? How do... Does how does Gabby Douglas get entered into the? How does you know? And I mean, we even in the in the spectrums that we're normally celebrated in, they're still new characters. Even if we just yeah. stick to Cause, arts cause, entertainment, cause, and I mean, hey, <laughs> like, but, hey, yo, whatever y'all want to, George Floyd to be in that book before Reginald Lewis. That's crazy. Yeah, no disrespect to George Floyd, but that's that's crazy because but that's, like, but that's the time that you know. When we talk about well, with critical race theory, there may not there may not be any books. Yeah. Um, but I think with with somebody like Carter G. Wilson, the idea was to keep creating, not to just you're learning the past to have that appreciation. But remember, mm-hmm. I'm continuing to develop more and more scholars, yeah. and it's still a lot of the past that we still don't celebrate because yeah. people talk about Black Future. And I'm like, it's still some stuff in the past that we still need to dig into and really, really talk about. A lot, when we control the narrative as black people, black history, every day, 365 is McDonald's mm-hmm. was able to market 
to us with the heavy meal yeah, yeah, and, every day and, three, and a Big that. Mac. That was a good campaign. <laughs> what about the what about the 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 um the revolts? Yeah. What about what about the people That's, that fought back? Yeah. That what about part. the what about the the the, the maroons in Jamaica? What about the revolts? What about the David Walkers? What about yeah. what about the the Haitian revolutions? Those, yeah, those stories. Need to be to- in those stories, let's get into it. Yeah, hey, I don't want I don't want Black history to just be told from the standpoint of, oh man, we were just the the victims. Hey, I go to Stogies three times a week, and I, and I go there during the day, and every time I go there during the day, there's this couch full of. You know, white, I'm assuming, white and Jewish guys, and they're mm-hmm. watching Glorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. Three times a week. Mm-hmm. Three times a week I go in there, and they're watching their forefather kick ass. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering about that, like, because uh, the more I see that, I just be like, man, that's 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 crazy. Yeah. But they watch it over and over again because it celebrates the side of yeah. them that they, that they are proud to identify with. Yeah, you we, know? See, we see Quentin Tarantino make a Django with a Jamie Foxx. Without understanding that there were brothers that rebelled. Yeah. That it didn't have to be a fictional movie. Mmm. It didn't, that didn't have to be Django fictional. Django didn't have to be fictional. That's a bar it's, right there. It's wow. Because rebellions happen and you had those people in real life. That's a bar right there. That's heavy. Damn, Django didn't have to be fictional. But can it get made if 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 it's not fictional? Man. Cause then at that point, you know, are are, are you are you taking it uh are you taking it serious, man? Wow, that's a that's a real because, that's a great point because I I learned a lot of stuff you know from this show even from um was it I don't know the exact but uh you know Fred brought up in South Carolina where they actually stopped slavery for twelve years hmm. because of the revolting like that story you know those are things that like I shouldn't have to personally know a scholar on the subject. To come across that information, you know, what I'm saying? We, like that. Well, okay, I'm gonna read this. Carter G, it's, it's on topic. What are we talking about? Okay, no, go ahead. Now remember, this this 1930s mm-hmm. when he said this. By the 1930s, Woodson complained about the intellectual charlatans, mm. black and white, popping up everywhere, seeking to take advantage of the public interest in black history. Mm. He warned teachers not to invite speakers who had less knowledge than the students themselves. Increasingly, publishing houses that had previously ignored black topics and authors rushed to put books on the market and in the schools. Instant experts, instant experts appeared everywhere and non-scholarly works appeared from, they call mushroom presses. (laughs) So he's saying even in the 1930s, we gotta be able to control it because people are gonna try to take advantage of it. So now, Every year something comes up, some controversy about how some corporation is trying to profit off of black history from doing it. I think this year, Bad, uh, Bath and Body Works or Victoria's Secret or Bed, whatever the, the, the place where people go get candles and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah I think it's Bed, Bath and Body. Yeah, Body Works. They had the black history candles covered in like Kente cloth or whatever. Then Apple, hey, I got an Apple phone. They had the the the, the Apple Watch band with the red, black, and green. Or they yeah. it, it showed up, you know, uh, uh, as a little app for my phone. So, you know, in the NBA, they wear the Black History T-shirts in the month yeah. of February. So, yeah. you know, and it's still corporate. And you know, my philosophy is, I always wonder when y'all wear them Black History T-shirts, did y'all go to a Black Printer, and y'all go to a black man t shirt manufacturer, NBA yeah. guys, you know what I'm saying? And that's becoming you know, a, hey, that's becoming a, a, a real uh divisive question, you, you know, know, like you know, if, we, if you're gonna if we're gonna take it there, but and then this delves into the black futures thing, we gotta still control it, even if we're yeah. talking about black future. My fear is the black future is gonna be the the people like Kanye. And the the the, the Jay Z's and the Beyonces, and they're going to be replacing the Carter G. Woodsons. They're going to be replacing the you know uh, the Martin Delaney's, the the Marcus Garvey's. Yeah, they're going to be. Re- I mean, you know, we didn't touch on this during the Harlem Renaissance, but I think it's something we should delve in in a future episode. 
the distraction that the Harlem Renaissance had to take the attention away from the Marcus Garvey movement. Yeah. And the, and the thing, and just to, on, along with what you said, and that's not to take away from the contributions of, you know, the, the Beyonce's, Jay-Z's, yeah, 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 nothing yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, but it's just it's to just, say that it's not, that shouldn't replace yeah, the yeah. intellectual, the philosophical, the tangible, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, a Meek Mill tweet is not a, a Malcolm X uh-huh. Yeah, it's not it's not treated it's it's not the same as a yeah. a, a Malcolm X and, and look some, and, some people take audit it. in your record deal is not a revolutionary act yeah I mean and it's I mean but granted I want artists to be fairly paid but what like the way the entertainment has crept in on a representation of culture mm. that's not our that's a part of our culture you know that yeah. would be almost like we we treat entertainment in culture so disproportionately it would almost be as if we went to a cheerleading high school where cheerleading was a subject and cheer- no cheerleading was something that happened during yeah. the football game yeah. that was it it's extracurricular yeah activity. That, that's it these yeah. are extracurricular activities that have yeah. become you know core subjects in our culture and yeah. i and i definitely feel like the replacement is dangerous because i mean we look at modern day time how many you if you stop 10 black people say hey name 10 modern day writers what could you say ta-nehisi coast Huh. Dennis Kimbrough. Uh, yeah, look at look at, the, Dyson, yeah, look at the, the alternate. What's the, what's what's my guy? The um, astrophysicist uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, Neil deGrasse yeah. Tyson. Brilliant brother, brilliant mind. But when I hear him talk, a lot of his uh, philosophers and a lot of the people he quotes are rooted in Eurocentric science. Plato mm-hmm. and yeah. Aristotle and on that on those platforms, it, it's never. The, the ancient Kemet people yeah. that may have influenced them or talking about the mystery schools or talking about the Dogon. And, and then we shame the Am Hotels. And, and we, Eric, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we shame. Yeah, the Am Hotels and, 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 or talking about the Dogon and the Syrian star system. Or he may say, oh, that's, that's uh, pseudoscience, but you're still going back and quoting Plato and Aristotle. But yeah. you're not digging deep enough to find out where they get it from. It's yeah. always somebody that did it before yeah. the other person. So if you got the platform, go and ask the question I would ask him. If I was sitting in the room, I would say, man, I, I, you're a brilliant mind, but you always start from the Eurocentric side of sciences. Yeah. What about the, 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 the people from ancient Africa that had the contributions to science that these Greeks borrowed? A lot of times they didn't borrow, they stole then burn the libraries so we couldn't get credit for it. And you know, I got the ultimate rebuttal because I used to feel this way, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the ancient, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient, you know, they didn't, they didn't write. They didn't, they don't have the documentations. But I got the rebuttal to anyone who says that now. Mm-hmm. Socrates ain't right. Mm-hmm. Socrates didn't write nothing. So you got to keep the same energy. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, Socrates same. didn't write. There's nothing ever written yeah, by Socrates. Keep, keep the same Keep the, the, they just say keep the same energy. It was important enough to Plato and them to keep the story alive. Yeah. And that's why the story still lives. So if yeah. it, if it, when it becomes important enough to us for the Amotep story to be alive, the serious star, for that to be alive, yeah. it'll be alive. Because there's a lot of modern day people to this day, not just Socrates, that didn't write nothing. But I understand to, I guess, to, um, What's they say when the rhetorical side of, of my question for a brother like they was devil's advocate? No, is that who's teaching these people? No, you got a great point there. Because I'm not gonna teach you your own history. And it all links back to Carter G. Woodson. And the inspiration is that they're not gonna teach me this if we don't celebrate it. And he's talking he's talking about a week. Yeah. But he wanted the idea was to start with a week, not for it to just only be a week. Yeah. The week was the seed. Then those students at Kent State was like, oh, okay. And we're going to a gap from 1926 to 1970. And then it doesn't become into prominence until 1976. And that's when we get the month, Black yeah. History Month. So you got this gap between 1926 all the way to 1976. Uh, yeah, you got this 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 long gap before it was in fashion to celebrate Black History Month and every president after. I wish it wasn't in fashion. I wish it was out of fashion because I feel like once stuff becomes in fact, you know, one thing regardless of how people feel about faith, whatever, 
One thing that Jesus said I really love in the Bible, if you love me, then follow my commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, then read about me. If you love me, remember my name. If you love me, follow my commandments. So if you if we love Carter, do what he did. If you love Malcolm, do what Malcolm did. It don't say if you love me, debate about or, me. Or take what you learned and build on it. Exactly. Because everyone is, is built on the inspirations of someone else. You don't get a, a LeBron if you don't have a Michael Jordan. You don't get a Michael Jordan if you don't have a Dr. J. You, don't yeah. get, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, There's the always been someone that came and then you build on it. Yeah. Whether it's music, entertainment, art, and scholarship. The scholars are just building off of the written works of the scholars that came before them. Yeah. So I was like, hey, to get this guy, you may not get, you know, uh, you may not get uh, a John Henry Clark if it's not for uh, the, the guy, uh, Arthur Schoenberg. Or you may not get, you know, certain people that are, that are scholars now. Hell, we may not get the African studies programs if it wasn't for Carter G. Wilson, because that was something else. No, he had sure. a big hand in implementing. When people talk about um, these colleges, he had a, a hand in, in helping usher in Africana studies, or, uh, African American studies, or African um, history at Howard. Even no. though he didn't, can, he didn't stay there too long, he got into it with the administration. Yeah, over you know, once again, he was a stubborn scholar. Yeah. But that that organization that he had, and I always the the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, 1915. He kept that going. He moved in his house in D.C. Third floor he lived in. First floor he ran his organization to the day that he died. Hey, you can't beat that. Hey, this is my put it in action moment, man. I'm just, just, telling, I'm just holding the 10X to it. I ain't holding no one else accountable to it. Putting it in action. Before this episode come out, I'm going to contact Heads Up Houston I'm going to recommit to teaching my resale class to their kids this summer. That's my, you know, that's my Carter G put in action right. based on what I heard moment, you know. And I'm going to do yes. that before this episode come out. You know, yeah, man. To, I, I just want to tell the people before we wrap it up to, um, to go back and build from the inspiration of the people that we celebrate during Black History Month. First, try to find some new names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No disrespect to the names that we hear, but and even Carter G. Wilson isn't a new name. Yeah. But I just wanted to give uh give Miss Flowers. Most of for not only for Black History Month, but give him his flowers for his legacy and what he intended black history to do. Yeah. First, under our deep culture and history and our legacy. But to also teach younger kids to continue on that path towards scholarship. So, hey man, that's hey man. You know what? Hey, the ten X. I'm motivated. The ten X gonna buy a copy of Carter G. Wilson. We're gonna have a giveaway, man. Okay, man. Yeah. You, you making these commitments, yeah, man? The ten X gonna buy. The, hey, the ten X gonna buy to get on Amazon it's, it's right now. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna have a giveaway. People, Yo, read the like the post. The leave Carter in the comment. Yeah. Share. Yeah. Tag four people. <laughs> nah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know what to give away. But now, nah, salute, salute to the ancestor, man. Yeah. Carter uh, Godwin Woodson. Um, you know. No, most of A hey, born December 19th, man. Hey, Sagittarius in the building, you know what I'm saying? 12 so, 19. Yo, this gentleman's history hour, man. This season two. Um, EQ. Rob J10X. Hey, we got Sal on the ones and twos. <laughs> hey, bro. And I am at about a seven and a half. I'm at about an eight. So you, all right. That's, <laughs> hey, man, that's, that's, about that's, hey, that's what, that's what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about. So, hey, yeah. one love, man. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, for sure. Salute, y'all. Yeah. If you're watching this on YouTube, man, hey, y'all, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. This is Gentleman's History Hour.